Hello everyone, welcome to week 7 lecture videos. Our today's topic is risk and the cost of capital and we will be covering chapter 9 today. First of all, a little background. Uh, long before the development of modern theories linking risk and return that we have discussed in week 5, smart financial managers adjusted for risk in capital budgeting. They knew that risk, risky projects are other things equal, less valuable than safe ones. That is just common sense you understand. Therefore, finance managers demanded higher rates of return from risky projects or they based their decision about risky projects on conservative forecasts of cash flows. So you understand that traditionally the risk of assets have been adjusted in two ways, either by adjusting the rate of return or by adjusting the cash flows. We will discuss more detail later. Nowadays, a company start with the company cost of capital as a benchmark risk adjusted discount rate for new investments. The company cost of capital is the right discount rate only for investments that have the same risk as the company's overall riskiness of the business. For riskier projects, on the other hand, the company opportunity, sorry, the opportunity cost of capital should be greater than the company cost of capital, whereas for the safer projects, the opportunity cost of capital should be less than the company overall cost of capital. The company cost of capital is usually estimated as a weighted average cost of capital, we will shortly see. That is, the average rate of return demanded by investor in the company's debt and equity. The hardest part of estimating the weighted average cost of capital is figuring out the cost of equity, that is the expected rate of return to investors in the firm's common stock. Many firms turn to capital asset pricing model, we also discussed in week 5, for an answer. The CAPM states that the expected rate of return equals the risk-free interest rate plus a risk premium that depends on beta and the market risk premium. Now suppose that you are responsible for a specific investment project. So the question is, how do you know if the project is average or above or below average risk? We suggest that you check whether the project's cash flows are more or less sensitive to the business cycle than the average project. Also check whether the project has higher or lower fixed operating cost, that means higher or lower operating leverage, and whether it requires large future investments. So these are the three points, that means sensitiveness of cash flows towards the business cycle, and the degree of leverage and also the magnitude of investment, these are the three factors will let you know whether a project is more risky or less risky than the overall riskiness of a farm. We will discuss once again more detail later. Remember that a project's cost of capital depends only on market risk. Diversifiable risk can affect project cash flows, but it does not increase the cost of capital since that can be diversified away. Also, don't be tempted to add arbitrary fudge factors to discount rates. Fudge factors are too often added to discount rates for projects in unstable parts of the world, for example. So these are the main uh, areas we will be highlighting today in our subsequent videos. So now, to be more specifically, we have two learning objectives today we will estimate cost of capital for company, for individual division, and for a project. And also, we will understand how to analyze complex, complex projects when the uh, risk of the project can change over time. As I indicated uh, initially, the company cost of capital is defined as the expected return on a portfolio of all companies' existing securities. 
It is the opportunity cost of capital for investment in the firm's asset, therefore the appropriate discount rate for the firm's average risk projects. Now, if a firm does not have any debt outstanding, the company's cost of capital is just the rate of return on company's stock. However, the company's cost of capital is not the correct discount rate if the new projects are more or less risky than the firm's existing business. Each project should be in principle be evaluated at its own opportunity cost of capital. And this is a clear implication of the value additivity principle uh, we discussed earlier, if you can remember. A firm, you know, usually consists of different assets, for example, asset A and asset B. In that case, the value of the firm is the present value of the cash flows to be generated by asset A and present value of the cash flows to be generated by asset B. So the farm value is simply the present value of the cash flows to be generated by A and B. Okay. So here a present value of A and B are valued just as they are the mini farms in the in which stockholders could invest directly. Investor would value A, for example, this one by discounting its forecasted cash flows at a discount rate that reflects the riskiness of asset A, okay? And they would value B by discounting it at a discount rate that reflects the risk associated with B. These two discount rate in general may be different. Now, if a firm considers investing in third projects, for example, C, it should also value C as if C were a mini farm. That is, the firm should discount the cash flows of C at the expected rate of return investor would demand if they could make a separate investment in C. The opportunity cost of capital depends on, you understand, the use to which the capital is put. Now look at this figure. Uh, it's a comparison between the company cost of capital rule and the required rate of return from the capital asset pricing model. So look at it's for a company uh, from your textbook, which is JJ Company. JJ Company has a cost of capital of around, you can see that 5.7%, okay? And this is the current discount rate if the beta is 5 point, no, sorry, 0.53. Now, in general, the correct discount rate increases as the project beta increases. Okay, so JJ should accept projects with rate of return above the security market line relating the required return to beta. So you understand that since the overall required rate of return of the farm is this, and this is the the overall beta of the farm. Now, if a project has a riskiness higher than this, I mean higher than 0.53, the farm should require a higher return for that. On the other hand, if there is a project that is less risky, the farm should require a return less than that. Okay? So that's the relationship between project individual project beta and the required rate of return. Now, as I indicated earlier that we define the company cost of capital as the expected return on portfolio of all the firm's existing securities, that the portfolio will usually include debt as well as equity. Thus, the cost of capital, if you look at this, cost of capital is estimated as a blend of cost of debt and cost of equity. Okay, so as I already said, that cost of debt is the interest rate on the firm's borrowing and cost of equity is the expected return demanded by investor in the firm's common stock. So, uh, you can see that value of the firm is the value of debt and value of equity and value of firm is, in other words, is the 
value of assets okay now all these figures I mean I'm talking about the value of debt value of equity and value of firm all these figures must be market values not accounting book values and you understand that market value of equity sometimes may be much larger than the book value so the market debt ratio I mean debt to equity ratio is often much lower than the debt ratio computed from the book value balance sheet and the cost of equity is calculated using the cap M that we discussed in week 5 and we will also discuss uh, in detail shortly Now, if you look at this example, uh, we have cost of equity 7.5%, sorry, cost of debt 7.5%, cost of equity 15%. Okay. Now, to calculate weighted average cost of capital, we need to find out the proportion of debt in the firm's total capital and proportion of equity in the firm's total capital. So, debt, this is the total debt and equity and you can see it's 30 percent it means that 30 percent of the firm's capital comes from debt and this is equity divided by total debt and equity it's 70 percent so it means that 70 percent of the capital comes from equity okay so forget about the tax part for the time being so weighted average cost of capital is the cost of debt and cost of equity how do you get cost of debt cost of debt multiplied by its weight and cost of equity multiplied by its weight. Now, uh, the 7.5% cost of debt is the opportunity cost of capital for the investor who holds firm's debt. And 15% cost of equity is the opportunity cost of capital for the investor who hold the firm's shares. Neither measures the company's cost of capital. That is the opportunity cost of capital of investing in the firm's overall asset. The cost of debt is less than the company's cost of capital because debt is more safer than the overall assets and the cost of equity is greater than the company cost of capital because equity of a firm that borrows is riskier than the overall asset. So equity is not a direct claim on the firm's free cash flow, it is a residual claim you all know. Now if we, if we solve this part, this will be, uh, you will find this will be 12 point 75% without adjusting for taxes. Okay, now you can see that weighted average cost of capital is a bit complicated because uh, the interest is a tax deductible item, and that's why we include this one minus tax rate part just to uh, remove the effect of tax advantage from, from the interest rate of the cost of capital. So you can see that it is our weighted average cost of capital is actually 12% instead of 12.7% when they include the tax advantage of the debt. Now as I indicated earlier that uh, there are two components in the cost of capital one is the cost of debt another is cost of equity and as I said that Calculating cost of debt is relatively easier because it's the interest rate on the firm's borrowing. However, calculating cost of equity is relatively complex because, you know, the uh, cost of equity is the rate of return required by investors. So it's not a straightforward interest rate. Now, typically, to calculate this cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model, which you are familiar with. And um, you can see that in capital asset pricing model where we say that required rate of return of equity is the function of risk-free rate and the market risk premium this is the market risk premium multiplied by the beta sensitiveness of individual stock towards the farm towards the overall market movement so this is the equation we use to calculate the cost of equity and that's is embedded in the weighted average cost of capital equation. So this is the end of our discussion on cost of capital and how to calculate it. In the next video, we will discuss how to estimate beta this part. Okay, thank you very much.